Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Jim, and I'm back again with another video. This time is about uh, uploading Marlin to your 3D printer. I hope that you find this video helpful, and if you do, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment. Uh, all right, so basically what you want to do is I've left some links in the description of this video to download Arduino 1.6.8. After you get that installed, you're going to want to navigate to wherever you have unzipped your Marlin firmware that you're going to use and you're going to double click on the marlin.ino file and once you do that this screen will pop up. Up here you'll see a bunch of uh, different file names. Uh, we'll go through those in a second, only the pertinent ones obviously. Uh, here I do suggest you go to file preferences and you probably want to turn on show verbose output during upload. You don't want to do it on complication but uh, upload is very helpful. Okay and then you can click OK. Next thing we want to touch on is uh, tools. Once you do connect uh, your printer to your uh, computer, you're going to want to double check the port and make sure that it is accurate. Okay, and then the board is uh, this one that I have selected here on the left, and the processor here is this one I have selected on the left. Okay. First thing we want to look at is configuration.h. This is where most of your changes are. I'll go through a couple of them uh, as we scroll down here. Uh, the baud rate right here. Um, I know it comes standard at 250,000. I have had some trouble uploading at 250,000, uh, as I'll talk about here in a little while. So uh, the next time I do upload, I'm going to change it to 115,200. Okay. Now, if you look down a little bit further, you'll see here, I do have a custom machine name defined, which is the bear. Uh, that's up to you. You can, it's by default, uh, comment it out. You can uncomment it. it. You can add your own, whatever you'd like. Uh, the next line here is uh, the number of extruders. Most of us have one. If you have two, three, or four, please change as necessary. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more here to thermal settings. If these are all the sensors for your hot end, your bed, and all that other stuff, uh, if you don't know what you have, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Uh, now we're going to go down to the PID settings. Again, if you don't know what a PID is and you really have no idea, leave them alone. I'll scroll down a little bit further here. Uh, thermal runaway. Basically, this protects your computer from catching on fire or anything like that. Uh, I know by default, it, the thermal protection on the hot ends is enabled. I always do also enable the thermal protection on the bed. It's 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 handy. Uh, let's see. End stop settings. And movement settings. Right here. Uh, this is the default access steps per unit. As it says just above it right here, X, Y, Z, and the last number is your extruder steps. That's one you're going to want to calibrate. Uh, you know, you can you know, search YouTube for anything about uh, calibrating extruders, and this here is the number you want to change. Mine it just happens to be 463. Okay. I'm not going to go through acceleration uh, and that kind of stuff. Z probe. This is where the BL touch stuff is, guys. I'm not going to go into this. I'm just going to keep scrolling past a lot of this stuff here. Oh, one thing I will touch on where it says right here for direct drive extruder V9, set the true. For geared extruder, set the false, which is this line right here. And that one is your default extruder. If you have, you know, an MK8 or an MK9 or whatever, it, that's usually set to true. Should you change to a geared extruder, such as the Titan or anything like that, you must change that to false or it will run backwards. Okay. Uh, right here, where it's to define X, Y, and Z max position, this is the size of your bed, guys. So make sure you get that right. X and Y is the size of your bed, and Z max position is the height that can go. So make sure that you know your numbers and you change those. Filament runout sensor, we're not too concerned with that. If you want to add one, there's plenty of videos to tell you how. 
Uh, again, mesh bed leveling. This is related to BL touch things and auto bed leveling. Again, same type of thing here. We're going to keep skipping past that stuff. Additional features, EEPROM right here. Most of you guys are going to want to enable this. This is uh, commented out by default. Uh, so you're going to want to unchange, take out the two slashes in front here to define the EEPROM settings. Basically what that does is it lets you issue a M500 command and let you save your changes. And it will also be available there on the screen. Okay. And down here you can change your preheats for, I believe the top one is PLA and the bottom one is ABS. You can change those if you want to. Job timer, eh, you can do that if you want. LCD and uh, SD card support. This is where we want to look. Uh, give me one second. Now, most of these come with the uh, smaller of the two LCD displays, and which I'm actually looking for at the moment. And this is the one that most of them come with, is the RepRap Discount Smart Controller. Uh, usually that is uh, uncommented, but mine, I do have that commented out, and I have this one uncommented. This is the little bit bigger screen with the little nicer icons. I don't know. It's just me. I like it. Uh, other than that, uh, you can, you're can. you more than welcome to look through all this stuff, but I figured I would touch on some of the main things here. All right, the next one that we may want to look at, you don't have to look at this one, is configuration underscore advanced. Okay, if we look in here, uh, I can't remember if there's anything in here we need to change, but we'll take a quick look. I don't think we need to mess with that at all. The rest of these guys you shouldn't have to mess with. Uh, I'm not going to go into anything else other than that because these are just, just a basic video. So after you get that done, what you're going to do is you're going to click this check mark. And basically what that's going to do, it's going to compile it and make sure you have no errors. So we'll go ahead and let that compile. Oh, I just, while this is compiling, I'll say uh, prior to any of this, you want to make sure that uh, you have your USB cable hooked up to your printer and your printer powered down and so the power switch or plug is unplugged from the wall once you plug it into your computer you will get a little power to the board the lcds and the, you know a couple other things which is kind of what we want we don't want it powered on so after you have that uh, connected that's where you'll find in the beginning i went over the com port and whatnot Now, I will say Marlin sometimes is very finicky to upload. I mean, I know anytime I do this, I have a hell of a time. Sometimes it times out. It happens. And I just keep trying and trying and trying and trying until it goes. Eventually it will. You know, but uh, I haven't quite attributed that. I'm going to say it might have something to do with the baud rate maybe being too high that I touched on earlier. Uh, I haven't tried to upload it at 115,200 yet. I will. Uh, just not today, not in this video. I'm just kind of showing you guys the basic process and, and things like this. Most for any printer you can find, uh, if it is in a Facebook group, most of them have uh, Marlin versions available in the files area. You know, I know in the Flying Bear group, we do have many versions of Marlin in there. Some with BL Touch, uh, some without. So that is at your own discretion that you use those. Most printers do come loaded with uh, Marlin. I have not had experience with Repetier Host, so I can't really help you much there. But I've done my fair share of messing around with Marlin. Just to say that I do have a BL Touch uh, connected to my printer. And you know some of the settings you saw that I skipped over were related to that. Uh, I just, I don't feel it necessary for me to go through those. If you would like me to go through those, you know, please leave a comment below and uh, I'll do my best to uh, make another video uh, maybe next weekend on, you know, how to do that. Again, it's not very hard. You know, I, I, I did have a lot of help from the Facebook group and the Flying Bear people uh, in that group. It was it, it, being part of a group like that. 
is really helpful when you run into issues because you can ask questions and you know you get a whole bunch of you know a, a, a whole bunch of people reply with different scenarios and solutions that may may be helpful maybe not but may help you in a future date okay so as you see here you can see it did compile with no errors after that if your printer is hooked up to your computer you will then click that one right there that says upload it'll recompile again and then it will try and send it over to your printer like i said sometimes it's a pain uh, it'll time out which is why in the beginning i had you enable the verbose mode for upload if it does time out you'll see it like i said arduino and it is just kind of a pain in the ass when it comes to uh, uploading so uh, anyways i hope uh you found this video helpful if you did, please uh, like and subscribe down below, and uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, happy making, guys.